So hi, hello, a very good evening and a warm welcome to all the space explorer, ex explorers on a platform where screen transforms into knowledge and opportunity. So as we gather from different parts of the world, we might be separated by pixels, by few pixels, but we are united. We all came here together just because of our thirst for space exploration, right? So without any further delay, let's begin. Let's unlock this webinar and explore what this universe holds for us, right? So astrophotography, you may or might have heard this term before, or at least photography, you know, which we all like to do. We all like to take our selfies, right? So astrophotography is a science or is also kind of a hobby where we take the pictures of celestial bodies. Now, what do I mean by this? We, with this particular photography, we capture planets, we capture sun, we capture moon, galaxies, black holes, nebulae, all so many things out there, you know, whatever is in the universe, when we are capturing those things, it is basically termed as astrophotography. But before we, you know, delve into, before we more, you know, before we dive into this field, let's see how this field came up. How did we this started this and all that thing. So, you know, every day our eyes see the light, you know, capture the light from our surroundings, right? And uh, transform and some of those light transforms into our beautiful memories as well, right? So like, as we spend time with our family, as we, uh, you know, see the beautiful sunset or maybe a star filled night sky. So each memory that we carry, you know, that each memory that we carry in our mind is nothing but a picture written using light. Correct? Yes or no? So, but as we see things around us, we don't record them, right? It is just in our brain. These, these memories are existing in our brain. Now, can we do something and bring them, you know, in our real world and record them permanently so that we don't forget it? So this is where the photography comes into the picture. So we, by doing so, what we are doing, we are freezing, we are freezing this moment, we are freezing that moment in a time on a particular paper. So this is what is called photography. And the literal meaning of the photography itself is written in a light or written using a light. Now you might be wondering how this name came up. So basically uh, this name was given by a son of a very famous astronomer. So you might be knowing uh, about, uh, or maybe you might have heard a name called William Herschel, right? The famous astronomer who discovered Uranus uh, using mathematics. So this is not about William Herschel, basically. This is about his son, John Herschel, who, who itself was a mathematician and uh, you know explorer and was very much interested in uh, exploring this new field, which is called photography. So. John Herschel, a son of William Herschel, he itself named this term called photography. Now, those time, you know, back then, those people, you know, were those people were called as the catchers of light because they were the one, you know, who were actually catching the light coming from the cosmos. So now, as we see around, you know, as we look around, what do we see? We see people, we see beautiful sunsets, nature, animals. And so many things, and obviously we also, right? We uh, we take our selfies and all those things. But universe doesn't comprises just just uh, you know just with these things, right? So there is so much else in the universe. So Earth is one of the planets that we know, and just like Earth, we have eight planets, you know, in our solar system. Along with eight planets, we have Sun, we have asteroids, we have comets, and so many things we have, right? So first, let's see what this universe holds for us and what is actually present in the universe. So you might have seen, uh, you might have seen in the picture also that the universe, uh, you know, is consisting of beautiful nebulae, galaxies, clusters, and planets, moon, moons of a different planets. So all of these you might have seen, right? But now you might be, you might be wondering, how do we photograph them? Like if I want to capture a planet, which is sitting, you know, thousands of kilometers away or billions of kilometers away, how do I capture them? So there the astrophotography comes into the picture. Now you might be wondering when this, all of this gets started or, uh, you know, how, how do I know that these things exist? 
so you know many of many of you might have gone to the terrace and especially as ma'am mentioned that uh, i begin my journey you know of astronomy since i was a child uh, so i was just like to you know say a few points about it so i was very much fond of watching sunsets and sunrises and uh, this actually led me to jump into this field and why do i like the sunrises and sunsets because every day or no, if not every day i mean if not daily but i try to you know go to the terrace and uh, just look at the beautiful colors of the evening sky and as it turns you know yellowish orangeish and then suddenly all of a sudden it turns into dark so that gave me a thought process that okay in daytime there were no stars and all of a sudden i can see now bunch of stars i can see thousands of stars so what exactly happened and uh, but as i said universe is made up of different things and not everything can be you know seen with the naked eyes so if you go to a terrace or maybe some of you might have you know gone to gone to the terrace and uh, looked up and wondered that okay where are the planets where are the galaxies where are the nebulae where are all of this so we don't see all of them with our naked eye right so most of the time when we look up in the sky what do we notice we notice we notice these bright you know uh, shining dots shining like a diamond which we call as a stars but rest of them we don't see with any naked eye so where are they and how do we actually know that they are actually there they exist so most of us you know might be wondering that uh, saturn has rings we have seen saturn rings on a books right but can we see saturn rings with a telescope or with with a naked eye or do we how did we know that the rings are actually there so now it's really wonderful uh, you know it's really one it's very astonishing astonishing also that we knew nothing about the cosmos before the discovery of one wonderful instrument like and maybe all of you might have been now got the answer that what i'm talking about so the magic lies in one instrument which shows us the beauty of the cosmos so as i said when we look up in the sky what do we see we see sun yes the brightest object in the sky right it's the brightest object in the sky sun after sun which is the brightest oh yes moon so moon is the next brightest object right so okay we see we have the moon we have the sun what else do we have what else can we see with our naked eye um maybe milky way galaxy yes you heard it right we can actually see our galaxy with our naked eye just we need to go a little far from the city okay so we have got the sun we have got the moon we have got milky way galaxy what else can we see mm, maybe planets but not in detail right so then how did we capture these wonderful images of the moon that you are actually seeing on screen so it's so fascinating right like sitting on this blue planet sitting on this blue pale dot we are able to gather the light from those galaxies which are you know which are sitting at millions of light years away so this is what you know this webinar is about how did we capture this how do we you know actually photograph them and first of all how did we discover that they actually exist so it all started with one beautiful or with one wonderful instrument that now you have as you got it's uh, nothing but the telescope so you know as uh, uh, for a doctor the most important instrument is nothing but their stethoscope right that's the most important instrument for a doctor so for astronomer for a person who loves space or for a person who wants to explore space this is the most important instrument right and uh, you might be wondering that okay, who discovered who invented this telescope then we'll come to that story maybe in some part of the webinar but for today i'll just tell you that the telescope was invented by a person called hans lippershey and it was around 400 years back so if we take our journey 400 years back that's where we find that's where we find the invention of the telescope so yeah we had the telescope with us for just 400 years okay so this and before the invention of this uh, before the invention of telescope we did not you know explore the universe in much detail because all we had our eyes and as you know our eyes cannot see many things in space so telescope is the telescope is the instrument which opened a new window for the cosmos okay so it's a 
it's a new it's a whole new window of space exploration so this is the instrument which brought revolution okay and obviously later on so many astronomer used this and you know discovered many things but you might be wondering okay if hans lippershey has invented the telescope then why are the galileo is famous so galileo is famous for a couple of things which i'm going to tell you now so if you see if you're able to see my screen just a minute yeah so as you can see my screen galileo galilei the very famous name right we all see his names his name in a, in a, on a general pop, on a general knowledge book on a social science book on a physics and everywhere we see his names right we see his name so he did not invent the telescope then why he is famous so he is famous for his uh, you know his one activity and the activity was to you know introduce uh, the use of telescope in astronomy field so like as i said we are we can see them with the we can see things with you know telescope but can we record them like if i want to you know uh, have that moment of time and maybe record it for further analysis can i do that can we do that back then we did not have the technology right we did not have the cameras and all those things we did not have any of that so then how did we do that how did we you know started analyzing the picture or was there any method was there any method you know using which maybe i can explore even further uh sadly it was not there okay so i'm talking about 400 years back in the past so imagine 400 years back hardly you know we had electricity in our home uh science was just you know at at the very beginning stage it was bit, it was at its infant stage and uh even then we had this thought process of recording things okay but as you know cameras was not there technology was not that advanced so what did we do we took a paper okay and we started looking through telescope and started drawing on a paper itself okay so that was the very first method of recording anything okay so that was just drawing so yeah so as you see on a on a screen if you can see the moon picture over here this is the very first sketch of the moon drawn by none other than galileo galilei so galileo yes so this is the very first image or this is the very first sketch drawn by galileo okay now he has you know seen the moon he has you know discovered the jupiter uh, he has discovered the uh, moons of jupiter the the bands on a jupiter and all that now below to this moon image there is a one more image now you might be wondering what is this there are three circles maybe some of you might have got what i am talking about which picture i'm you know uh, uh, which object i am trying to point at so this image just below the image that you are seeing over here yeah so this one which you are just which you are seeing right now this is nothing but the drawing of a planet which has rings yes i'm talking about saturn so this is basically the drawing of a saturn which was made by galileo and obviously we don't see rings here right these are the circles and that is because back then when he used a telescope his telescope was not much advanced okay his telescope you know was not much able to resolve the rings and what all did he see he just saw maybe there is a you know circle in the center and just beside to those there are some kind of rings so you know what did he named them he named them he named these side rings or side circles called as ears of the saturn okay yes so he named those you know blobs as a ears of saturn so as you see we can record them with the eyes uh, we can record them on a paper we can draw things right but not up to very detail not up to you know uh, up to the mark or not that kind of detail which is good for the science or maybe for analysis so then how do we do that is there any way now 
as i said the galileo started you know using telescope almost 400 years back now for about 200 years after that there was no way of recording things okay so i'm talking about uh, an era of 1880 1880 1870 somewhere around so if you see if you, if you look at the image this one on the top, on the left most uh, on the left most image this is a 1851 this is a very first image of our moon a closest celestial neighbor now you can see how fuzzy it is right it has no detail at all but obviously right now we we are enjoying 108 megapixel on our phone we are enjoying 200 megapixel on our phone and we are taking you know very crisp and sharp selfies we are capturing wonders of cosmos using hubble space telescope we have james webb telescope in space but everything had or everything have a very beautiful history okay and that's what needs to be appreciated so this image so you know as i said lot of struggle you know happened or lot of struggle went before we reach up to this point so this is this 1851 in 1851 we took the very first image of the moon by none another than uh an astronomer called uh, john draper or maybe uh, uh, not not john draper it's a henry draper my bad so henry draper was the one who actually uh, took the photograph of the moon and uh, yeah so this is the very first image of the moon now you cannot see any detail right and when we look at the moon what do we see we see only black patches black patches right we see uh, white regions right what else can we see with the naked eye on the moon if i remember i think maybe one or two bright spots which later you know name we, we name them as a, as a crater so in general when you look at the moon you only see these bright and dark patches and that's all and nothing else but when you look at the telescope when you look when you look through a telescope and maybe attach a device which record the light being gathered by the telescope nothing but a camera you can record these details for further analysis so as in 1851 we captured this image yes we can see some of these craters right you might be able to see a little bit of detail over here as we said the telescope, uh, the telescope was invented 4 400 years before from now and uh, it was not till 200 years from now the photography was invented so it was till it, late 1800s we were not much we were not into photography itself okay so yes in 1851 that was the era when we actually photographed the moon for the very first time now as you are seeing here there is a huge difference between there is a huge difference between this uh, uh, picture taken you know in 1851 and the picture taken in 2023 almost 150 year uh, 170 year gap right but you can can you can you notice the incredible um, incredible amount of you know uh, detail difference so as we you know advanced in as we had, as we advanced our telescope as we advanced you know our cameras our sensors and all those things we also uh, you know we also looked deep into the cosmos right and uh, right on the right side as you see in 1880 this image was a nebula image okay now if if you see all of a sudden you say that is this actually a nebula image because you don't see any nebulosity you don't see what you are expecting to you know to be seen in the nebula so yes but you know it was very much uh, in an in 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 fan stage so as we were not much into technology development so it's we we did capture uh, the image right we did capture this uh, in orion nebula image in 88 now after couple of years it's not years actually it's a century after almost one and a half century in 2023 can see how beautiful the details are here right now these redness these gases the these new stars new born stars so now if you take these images you can actually do much more in depth analysis you can check 
what you know what these nebula contains the, the redness the red color of the this nebula is nothing but your hydrogen so as we advance our technology as we you know progress in our field in, in our field we are much more adept or we are you know much more uh, open to ex space exploration now you might be wondering that okay uh, with the naked eyes i don't see anything with telescope i can see few things but if i want to record them i need a camera right now on the left side if you see this is the old telescope these are the antique telescope which actually william marshall used and these are the very soft, these are the you know old cameras now you might be thinking okay these are the old cameras what about now so this combination the combination of telescope itself you see this telescope and this particular these particular cameras they actually bring the universe to your door right you are able to probe more deep into the universe but okay not everyone have the access of not everyone have the access of these you know sophisticated instruments right these you know big mounts these uh, telescopes these cameras not everyone can afford them or not everyone have the access of these things now if i want what if i want to capture things but i don't have i don't have the you know uh, big cameras i don't have the big telescope so what do i do so i would just like to you know show you a couple of photos which i took 90% of the photos which i took is from actually not the big big cameras it was used just i just used uh, my phone camera itself to capture some of them so proceeding for the same on the right side if you see this sun image this particular there's a sun image and on top of this photosphere you can see some of the sun spot this is again was being captured by our cell phone itself for our, uh, from our smartphone uh, from our smartphone camera itself on the right side we have a moon this also i captured using my cell phone camera we have venus again the camera the mars this again i took from a camera from my phone camera itself this jupiter saturn uranus neptune this entire solar system category which i have taken from my phone camera itself obviously i attached some other uh, devices such as a small lens and for some of them i attached even telescope as well but yes even our, even our smartphone cameras also are able to perform as good as those cameras you know which which we saw in in our, in our previous slide so these are the couple of images which i have taken this is a nothing but the planetary nebula okay a death of a star this is a beautiful milky way that we can see with our naked eye if we just step out a little away from the cities this is a galaxy this is a, this is one of the nearest galaxy actually to us it's a triangulum galaxy which i have captured and uh, on the bottom left side if you see this is again a nebula where your star formation takes place so yeah i mean i like to take pictures because this is something which directly takes you to the space right and just by sitting here on earth you are able to go as much as you know uh, far you want so obviously we cannot take our motor bike we cannot take our car and go to space we cannot take the rockets and uh, go to these galaxies right at least as of now so what can we do we can take our cameras and point towards the sky and gather those photons and record them for ever and ever right so now the question is how do we do that do i need to read a book do we have a you know this bunch of uh, you know you you chunk of uh, pages that we need to read out to do astrophotography well actually no you don't need this you know huge uh, huge book to do astrophotography to learn astrophotography so let's see can we capture the stars can we do this using our phone itself and if so what are the settings or how do we do that using our phone camera itself because we all have our phone camera right now if i want to capture stars if i want to capture a milky way galaxy if i want to capture uh, the rotation of the earth itself so if you see in the middle the the central image is nothing but showing you the rotation of earth as the earth rotate you know we don't see the earth we don't see the rotation of earth right but what can we see we see that stars are moving round and round 
as the rise and as the set. So this is what is depicting. So the central image is depicting the rotation of Earth itself. So can we can we photograph this? Can we photograph the Milky Way? Can we photograph these stars? Can we photograph these something called star trails? The middle image is nothing but you know um, called the star trail because you are you are seeing the trails of stars in sky. You are following the path of a star, and that's what you're seeing over here. So can we do this now? Can we do this from our phone? You might be wondering, you know, how to do so. So let me take you into the journey of astrophotography and uh, let me quickly show you how to use our phone camera to do astrophotography to capture these beautiful images of space and uh, yeah so without any further delay let's go So now I will be uh, sharing my phone camera and see what all settings are required to capture these beautiful space images. Okay. I hope I'm audible now. Okay. So what we are going to do, what we are trying to do here, we are trying to capture these space images. We are trying to capture the cosmos using our smartphone camera itself. Okay. So now, now the question is, can we do that? And if so, what are the settings? What app should I use? Okay. To capture these beautiful uh, images. So what you need to do, you just need a smartphone. Okay. Go uh, open your smartphone, unlock it, and go to the camera. So as we open the camera, what do we see? We might see these kind of options, right? We might have option of photo, portrait, video, and so on, right? But uh, you might be asking which mode I should use. So we have so many modes, right? you know, these days in our, on our smartphone, right? We have. Uh, uh, option to slow down, which is called a slow motion. We have option to, you know, speed up the video. We have uh, stickers, you know, um, fun sticker, you know, things and all those things. We can put emojis on our face. We can, you know, uh, mold our face and do some fun activities, fun things. So you might be wondering which mode I should use to, you know, capture the space images. So what you need to do, go to the more and the and the mode that you would want to use is your pro mode. Okay. So most of the smartphone have uh, this mode actually. If you, buy, if you go to the mode, I have this mode, some called pro. I'll go to the pro mode. Okay. Now, oh my God, I'm seeing a lot many options. Oh, ISO, speed, EV, focus, WB. What is all of this? You might be wondering. Ah, this is so much confusing, right? What else do I need to, what do I need to do here? Okay. So don't worry. That's why I am here to tell you, uh, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to toggle too many settings. Okay. All you need to understand a couple of settings that you would want to use to capture images. So the most important setting in the astrophotography is speed. And maybe in some of the smartphone, it is termed as shutter speed. Okay, now you might be thinking, what is a shutter speed? So shutter speed is nothing, but it is a time, it is a duration for which you want to open your sensor. Okay, or 
in simple in, in simpler terms it is just a uh, duration you know um let, let, let's say i have uh, kept my shutter speed as a 5 second so what i'm trying to do here now i want to open my shutter for 5 second and let the photons let the you know light come in for a 5 second and then i close my shutter so this is the sh this is the duration for how long the shutter is going to be open okay now as you might have seen uh, you know uh in in the night time the stars are a point sources of light right they emanate very dim light right i mean at least as we get from here, as we get here on the earth it's not as bright as the sun right sun is the most brightest thing in the sky and uh, in comparison to the sun the stars are very 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 faint right so you need more and more photons so one way to collect more photons is to increase the duration of your uh, you know sensor opening so as you keep your sensor open for a longer period of time you are collecting the photons for a more for more time right so obviously 2 second uh, shutter speed will or uh, will collect less number of photons than 10 second shut shutter speed right the i'll demonstrate what effects you get if you increase your shutter speed but in just in general you just think that the longer shutter speed you keep the longer shutter speed you keep the longer for a longer uh, that much longer due to for duration of time you are gathering the photons okay so again i go to the pro mode okay so as i go to the pro mode i have a speed now I, i hope i have everyone have got what do you mean by shutter speed next uh, next uh, you know setting which you need to toggle is iso okay now you might be wondering what is iso so iso is nothing but the sensitivity of your uh, camera okay in general in general just as of now thing iso is nothing but the sensitivity of sensitivity of camera so as you know the stars the galaxies whatever is in the universe it is you know it is a very dim as we are sitting here on earth we are getting a very small chunk of light they are very dim in the sky so what do we need to do we need to increase the sensitivity of our camera itself of our sensor itself and how can we do that we can do that by increasing the iso so as i increase my as i am increasing the iso you know number i am increasing the sensitivity of my camera so now you see as i am increasing my uh, you know as i am increasing the iso till 3200 i am getting more and more bright because now my sensor is much more sensitive right so all you need is high number of iso to capture stars and a longer duration of shutter speed that's all only these two things which you need to remember and for some cases if it is not being focused so you can try either putting it on manual okay and if it is not being focused using manual settings then put it on auto and as you put it on auto you you know move your slider left and right and then you can see see i'm you know the stars are being um focused and defocused so i'll put it on manual as of now or maybe let's put it on auto now i'll come back to photo just to explain few things <clears throat> as we click our picture you know as we take the selfie or as we uh, take a picture of our surrounding can you guess how much time it takes to click a picture done right maybe it uh, it takes around some milliseconds right so as i click here done right so within a millisecond i have taken a picture now can i take a picture of a space within this millisecond well actually no because the stars are very dim and right now as you are seeing my surrounding as you are seeing the you know um, my office it's a uh, daytime right there is so much light there is a huge you know bulb there is a huge bulb up in the you know up in the ceiling which is you can think as a sun so right now we are surrounded by light means it is a daytime so when you take a picture in daytime it takes milliseconds to take a picture because we, because you have so much light around you but night is dark right you don't have this much amount of light so what i'll do let us Turn this daytime into nighttime and see 
what effects do we get and can we take a picture using can we take a picture within the millisecond and still see the stars and by the way i'll just try to show you huh. oh oh my god we are in the night time it's less i hope uh, you know the light is less now <laughs> right okay so as i was as i clicked my picture as i clicked the picture in daytime you can see these stars right you can see these dots right these are the stars and yes i could uh, i captured them but it was a daytime now if i go back to the night back to my pro mode also i'll just try to show you what was the shutter speed for this daytime picture oh yes here if you see on the bottom side just a minute i'll just annotate yeah so as you see on the bottom uh, on the bottom right it is 1 by 25 second right so for how long my sensor was open my sensor was open for just 1 by 25 second it's a millisecond right so i mean yeah so the picture got clicked within a blink of eye now using the same setting 1 by 25 second right let us put the shutter speed as 1 by 25 second here it is 1 by 30 second so more or less same now i'll click it then let's see whether we get the stars or not okay oh i have clicked it but you don't see any stars right and this is what actually happens as the stars are very faint source of light as we are sitting on earth you need to keep your sensor open for a longer time for a longer period of time so what i'll do i'll increase my sensor speed let's say right now uh, it was 1 by 30 now let's go to 1 by you know half 0.5 one second Two second. Okay, let's put my shutter speed for two second. Let's put our sensor open for two seconds, and after that, it will close. Yes. <laughs> so okay, I'll just click it and see what happens. So my phone is taking two second to click a picture now. Oh yeah, I have got a picture. Now see, you can see the stars, right? A little bit, little bit better than previously. See, in a previous image, nothing was visible. but as you have increased your shutter speed as you have let your sensor open for a longer time you can see stars now so now let's do some more experiment and uh, increase the shutter speed for further um let's put it for 4 second now and see what effects do you get or let's maybe let's put it for 8 second and let's see what do you get okay 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 boom okay Oh, now the your galaxy, now your stars are much more brighter, right? So as you see, now you should be able to see more and more details, right? Now you might be seeing more number of stars compared to this particular picture. Okay, now let's do one thing. Let's increase the sensitivity and keep the shutter speed. Let's say four second. okay and let's increase the iso and see what happens so as i increase my iso from 250 to let's say 800 okay and speed shutter speed is how much 4 second okay so i'll click a picture so remember right now what is the setting the shutter speed is 4 second means my camera my sensor is open for 4 second and right now the iso sensitivity is up to 800 and see what happens boom 3 Two, one. Here we go. Oh yeah, now it's much brighter, right? Because I had increased the camera sensitivity. I had increased the sensor sensitivity sensitivity. So that's why now you're getting a brighter image, right? So these are the two settings which you need to play with. So one is your remember, one is your shutter speed, and as stars and all of these are very faint source of light. you need to increase your shutter speed so most of the smartphone have this range okay so if i go to my phone let's see what range do i have uh, okay the lowest shutter, uh, shutter speed which my phone offers is 1 by 6000 okay and the highest shutter speed which is offering uh 10 second 
okay but most of this but yeah so most of the smartphone have this range so up to 10 second you can do some of the smartphone can go even beyond also you know 20 second up to 30 second so you can reach up to 30 second uh, shutter speed also so all you need to do is put your camera on a stable platform okay you can use anything literally anything i uh, for the first time when i tried a mobile astrophotography i actually used a, a bunch of my own clothes by a bunch of you know my own uh, wet clothes because they will be heavy so they will not provide a uh, jerk to the phone so i used my own clothes to make the phone stable maybe some of you can use bricks maybe some of you can use a phone stand as well so all you just need to do all you just need to make sure is your phone is stable it is not jiggling it is not wiggling around keep your phone stable point it towards the sky open your camera open pro mode on in the pro mode you will see you will find two settings two major settings you need to play with one is your shutter speed and another is your iso oh good morning okay <clears throat> let me decrease the shutter speed Yeah, so I was saying that uh, you need only two settings to fid fiddle with. One is your shutter speed. Keep your shutter speed as max as you can. Okay, if you are using a stable platform, you can increase it as much as you want. You can increase it up to 30 seconds also, the max that you have in your phone. If you're using your hand to capture, if you don't have any stable platform to do so, then you can only uh, keep it stable up to hardly one second, up to two seconds. So if you have a, uh, you know, uh, a stable platform you can increase it as much as you want till your camera is offering so that is done we have increased the shutter speed second option that we need to fiddle with is your iso so increase your iso maybe let's say 800 or 1600 my phone is offering till 3200 so you can actually keep it maximum no problem in that okay depends how much light you have in your surrounding so generally sky is dark right you do if you're trying to do uh astrophotography from a uh, you know, away from your away from these bright lights, you can increase the ISO till maximum. So increase ISO, ISO to, till maximum, increase uh, shutter speed to maximum, and done. And make sure you are focused. Okay, if it is not being focused, focus. Put uh, try to put it on auto focus or do it manually, whatever you feel best. And bang, you are ready to explore the universe. So you see, it is not as sophisticated as sophisticated as we thought. Okay, it doesn't require you know big instruments. It doesn't require big big observatories to capture uh, you know our universe. So that's what our science has offered. And right now, universe is in our hand itself, right? We just need to unlock it, open a camera setting, point it towards the sky. You have the universe in your hand now. So that's all. It's a very it's as simple as that. It's as simple as taking the selfies, but only. Keep your settings, as I said. So, okay. I hope you have enjoyed the session and learned a little, learned a bit. And uh, I'm ready to take, you know, questions from audience now. So thank you so much for having, a, you know, for providing your time. And let's see. And also one more thing, which I would like to, uh, you know, say is you might have been, you might, you might have seen settings, as I said. So, so yeah, as you know, as I was showing you a few pictures, a few beautiful pictures of nebulae, galaxies, and all those things. So obviously, to do so, you need a combination. You need a you know wonderful combination of the telescope as well as camera. So Navar's team is also offering a course of building of making your own telescope itself. So imagine you already have a camera in your hand, right? All you need is the telescope. So as if you get the telescope and just, you know, place a camera on top of it, you have this deadliest combination of capturing the cosmos. So yeah, that option is also available. So um, here I conclude my session. I hope everyone have learned something, have got some insights into astrophotography. And uh, now I'm ready to take the question. So thank you.
Yes, Amit, you can continue. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, sir, for this uh, wonderful session. Uh, on behalf of our audience, I would like to ask you some questions generally asked by them. So some children have asked like how we can see our own galaxy and is it possible to take the pictures of our own galaxy and how we can take pictures in, uh, for example, Apple or Apple devices or iPhone rather than Android, Android devices. Okay, uh, that's a, a bunch of questions and it's actually a good question. So talking about the first, uh, you know, speaking about the first question, can we see our galaxy with our naked eye? Yes, you can see, but you know, as we have, uh, you know, as we are living in cities, as we are, you know, having artificial light around us, that actually blocks these starlight, you know, from reaching our own eyes. So, if you want to see the Milky Way galaxy, if you want to see our galaxy, all you need to do is get away from the cities or go to your, you know, uh, go to some place where you don't have these city lights. So yes, you can see, you can watch Milky Way, maybe uh, from a village or maybe, you know, uh, just a couple of, uh, you know, maybe let's say 100 to 150 kilometers from whatever city you are living in. If you're living in a village, if you're living in town, you should get the Milky Way. But if you're living in a big cities, uh, in a major poly or metropolitan city, it will be, you know, it will not be visible. So all you need is go to remote areas, go to, you know, uh, maybe, um, to maybe on a vacation somewhere where in, you don't have many lights around, you should be able to see the Milky Way galaxy. Now coming to the second question, yes, you can, no matter what phone you have, whether it is an Android or whether it is an iOS, Apple, whatever it is, you can capture, you can capture space with any of the phones that you have. All you just need is a pro mode, that's all. And maybe, um, you know, in iPhone, uh, if the pro mode is not there, you might need to purchase an uh, app in iPhone. Uh, so, sir, I also want to ask one question. For example, what is the first step to take uh, generally pictures or to start the astrophotography? Okay. All you, as I, I said, we can move further. So, as I said, the very first step to take the space pictures is nothing but your phone camera itself. That's all. All you need is a smartphone. Take, uh, you know, take your smartphone, put it on a stable uh, place, maybe, you know, uh, get a tripod for it or maybe place it on somewhere, wherever you feel that it is stable, it is not moving around. Okay. All you just need is stability. Okay. Because you are increasing your shutter speed, right? If you are moving your camera, your, uh, you know, your, your camera will capture light like this. So you need a light to capture, you know, you need a light to enter into the sensor straight away, right? And not in this zigzag manner. So that is why all you need is to put your phone camera stable, open the camera app. If you're using Android, open the camera app, go to the pro mode and just twiggle with these two settings, shutter speed and ISO. And that's all. Increase the ISO to the highest level that you have and of, of and for shutter speed as well and you should get a start in your phone all you need is a small all you need is a smartphone that's all uh, okay sir i still have one doubt uh, like how we can see our uh, for example if we are in earth we can't see our earth so hmm. how we can picture our own milky way galaxy if we are in the milky way galaxy <laughs> okay uh, it's a very good question so Maybe some of you might have seen the pictures of Milky Way galaxy. Uh, it looks like a disc. Okay. It has a spiral. It has arms. So it is not, uh, it, you know, it is not like a sphere. Okay. It is not like a sphere. It is basically a disc, the flat disc, right? And uh, obviously we cannot see the entire Milky Way galaxy, right? We cannot see these spiral arms, you know, moving around the center. We cannot see that complete structure as we are sitting inside our you know, galaxy itself. So it is like, you know, being inside this room, being inside our home and trying to capture uh, the structure of our own house. That is not possible without going out of the home, right? So yes, we cannot capture the entire structure of the Milky Way galaxy, you know, showing you this, okay, this is the arm, these are the arms. But as you revolve around the sun, you get to see some of the arms, if not every arms altogether. You cannot see all the arms, you know, together, but you can see some of the arms depending on your location, depending on your where you are on the earth and also depending on, you know, which month you're trying to capture 
Okay. So if you're trying to cap, so there are two galaxies or there are two arms of Milky Way galaxy, which you can actually see if you're in Northern Hemisphere. You can uh, see the summer arm, summer Milky Way galaxy. Okay. That is also called as a Sagittarius arm. So during summers, you sh you will be you should you know sh you should be able to see these bright uh, galaxy and uh, if it is a winter time you will be seeing the orion arm so maybe some of you are familiar with the orion constellation so that galaxy arm you can actually see so yes we cannot see the entire structure at once but you can see some of these spiral arms depending on your location on earth and also the time uh, or the month of the year uh, okay sir so sir these costs Okay, sir. So this question was generally asked by students. So can you also give me some tips uh, for capturing pictures of Neptune in Pune? Okay. See, uh, capturing a new capturing a Neptune on a phone is like you know um, capturing a newspaper which is in America right now. So it is something like that. So to capture, you know, to capture Uranus, to capture Neptune, these are the very far worlds, right? These worlds are sitting at a billions of kilometers from here. So in order to capture them, you need one more uh, device, which is missing. You have phone, but you have, you, you, there's one more device, which is missing. And that is the telescope. So if you have a telescope, you can capture Neptune with your phone, with your phone, with your phone also. But that device is more important because that will take you even further. Your phone can take you maybe few kilometers in space, maybe few, you know, thousands or millions of kilometers in space. But if you want to travel further in space by sitting here on Earth, you need a telescope. Okay, sir. Thank you. And uh, sir, uh, one of the students asked the question like, how does a telescope generally work? Okay. Uh, as I said, you know, that's uh, that's a good question, by the way. But um, we would like to, you know, maybe offer you a, uh, you know, maybe uh, you can join the course which is being offered by Navars, where you will learn, you know, all the concepts of telescope starting from scratch till you will make your own telescope itself. So there are different telescopes, you know, in general, if you ask. So, yeah. So that is a question for maybe for another chapter. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Samit. Uh, thank you, Ashish, sir. I have a small mm -hmm. announce announcement for the students. Uh, let me share my screen. I hope all the students enjoyed uh, the session very much. Okay, there is a lot of information available uh, for the students. And uh, you know what? Like Ashish, sir, did on his phone, all the students also can capture beautiful images of the sky uh, by keeping it stable. Okay, so... All you need to do is actually you have to put on right settings, isn't it? Like Sir said. And if you want, if you want to watch it again, you can also watch because it will be posted on the YouTube and also your schools will be sharing the video to you. No worries. And the thing is, what we are looking for what is you should uh, you should actually share your images once you capture on the community. So I, I hope uh, all of you have access to uh, ISRC community. And if you scroll down, you can see the post on uh, NASA Power Up. So if you scroll down, you can see the comment box. In the comment box, you can also attach your images here using the upload attachments. So once you capture your images, please do upload and uh, put, you know, you can also mention your settings and what object you captured, your name, so that, you know, uh, we, we may select the best image and create a post around it. Okay. So I guess that sounds very exciting. And uh, for all the students, very, you know, I, I wish you all the best to capture the images of the sky okay and uh, so that you can be proud of and you can share on the community thank you very much all the best to all of you thank you Ashish sir and thank you Sumit